Hello, good day. Uh, thank you for joining us, wherever you are. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing what has happened in the PC business and with PCs in, in the pandemic. Um, I am Ezra Gottheil. I am the principal analyst for the devices and IoT practices. Thank you all for joining us. There are questions you can, uh, there's a question box you can use. Uh, let us let us begin. Let me check to make sure we are muted. Here we are. Let's go. We're going to be looking at PCs in the a very chaotic uh, first ha first half year of a, of a pandemic and what we see happening going forward. In a way, this year has been the best of times for PCs. Um, PC sales have, have gone up for a large extent. They've went up in commercial and then they went up in consumer. Um, and uh, AURs are going up. People are, are, are purchasing more expensive PCs in many cases than they have in the past. What we see facing us in, is the worst of times. Uh, TBR believes that the, the upcoming year will be a rough one for PCs and a rough one for the economy in general. One second, please. Call. Check this.
Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me now. We were having technical difficulties. I will restore the screen in a, in a minute. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me now. We were having audio difficulties. Um, I'm going to ask my colleague to confirm he can hear me. Today's webinar is uh, the state of the PC industry in, in, uh, during a pandemic. Um, we've had a, a chaotic first half of the year, first three quarters of the year, and um, where we ha we look upon rough times going forward. There are there is some good news and there's some bad news, and they are nuanced and they affect lots of people differently. I'm I'm still trying to ensure that people can hear me. I'm not sure. I'm I'm having problems with audio here. I'm going to go forward uh, with the assumption you can hear me. I'm trying to get feedback from my Okay, so this will be a discussion of of PCs in a pandemic. This has been a a, a an up and down year in some ways with sales first in commercial and in consumer it's been the best of times we've seen growing AURs growth in high profit categories of high end uh laptops gaming machines and 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 uh, mobile workstations but we have also seen the worst of times with problems currently up to now in the supply chain and we expect problems in the in demand going forward this has been so far a fat year. It looks like the third calendar quarter will also be a fat uh, a a a fat year. But we anticipate problems going forward because basically we're looking at a market that has been somewhat saturated. Let's let's move on. So the changes that we've seen have been changes in how we work, where we work, what kind of work we're doing and how we're doing it. Been changes in learning uh, at, at all educational levels. Again, social isolation or actually physical isolation has required that we work distantly. Uh, we also have been playing from home to a large extent and that has affected the PC market as well. Finally, there have been and will continue to be economic changes, which will very much affect the PC market. I'm, I'm very good. I have some confirmation that someone can hear me. And again, I apologize profusely. Technical difficulties in conferencing is one of the, the traits of this period. So we've gone through already through one or two phases and we have another phase coming. The first phase was the crisis. As we realized that there was a serious problem, as we realized this was gonna require changes in, in where we could be and how we could be together and where we could work and so on, we faced a crisis and we have largely gone past that initial crisis. We adapted at that point to a new normal, which was lots of rem remote work, remote learning, remote playing, a lot of physical isolation. Settled in for a while, but now we are in phase where that continues to be true, being moderated and tested, but what we face going forward is uncertainties, uncertainties about how much we will continue to physically isolate, in what circumstances, how much we're going to be able to resume our older ways of 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 working and playing and 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 learning and how, to what degree is the economy going to recover
from what has been a stunning shock. These are, as they say, interesting times. If we look at p just PC revenue growth for four major PC vendors, we see that, that uh, and, and the first thing to note is that the year ago quarter was a very good quarter. And a lot of the comparisons are with a quarter where there was growth, where there was growth in profitability, where there was growth in AUR. We saw a, a, a mixed first quarter uh, 2020, where basically the, the, the performance of the PC vendors was, given how rough things are, this is not too bad. There were definitely supply chain challenges in, in, in that quarter, and there was certainly disruption in demand, but there was also clearly increased demand for commercial PCs, and virtually all of the commercially oriented vendors reported a bit of a backlog going into the second quarter. In the second quarter, we saw a decline in commercial sales and a, a very uh, pronounced uptick in consumer sales. Apple introduced new PCs, but they weren't dramatically improved over others, and we have to believe that the Apple uptick was in part due to settling in for a longer haul with, with Apple PCs for the Apple PC customers. If you look at the, the different directions between Dell and the other two major uh, Windows PC vendors, that's a reflection of Dell's relative greater reliance on commercial sales and smaller reliance on, on consumer sales, and also, a failure even within its consumer business for Dell to capitalize as much as its two major competitors, Lenovo and HP, on the surge in, in uh, consumer demand. Into Q20, we did have some supply chain difficulties, but they basically resulted in people having to, to find a PC rather than going without for some period of time. And that shifted the market around, around a bit. One thing I might also note about this decline in, in commercial sales is this, this was largely a decline in desktop commercial sales. Uh, even Dell, that, that had a, a considerable decrease in, in commercial sales, had double-digit growth in its mainstream commercial notebook lines. Going in, here's the context. And the context is important for a number of reasons. It affected what we could do in the pandemic. It affected how PCs were able to react in the pandemic. But it also is something to think about as you look at the pandemic and its follow-up as, as um, an accelerator. There are lots of trends, some of them in, in technology, some of them in work organization, that were already ongoing. Working from home was, was increasing. Uh, Remote conferencing was increasingly used that were ongoing, but it got accelerated by, by the pandemic. And it varies from category to category, but basically our take is that there will be some bounce back when people can go back to working together, when they can go back to school and, and all that. But a lot of these trends that were accelerated will continue. That is to say, there will be a good deal more remote working, playing, learning in the years following even the full recovery from the pandemic than they would have seen if you just projected that overall trend straight line prior to the pandemic. So one of the important aspects of, of, of the context is that connectivity was pretty good for many people. Clearly, there are many people who do not have broadband, and that's a serious problem for education. There are some performance limitations, so, some degradation in network performance, but mostly globally, there was adequate connectivity, and there certainly was an increased demand for network traffic. One of the reasons for that is that people were doing things during the day that in the past they only did in the evening. The networks used to have a, a daytime work school uh, 
rush and then an evening entertainment rush. And in some cases, those two things started to overlap in the pandemic. There had been, and there has been for many years, an increasing utilization of the cloud and, and SaaS is now a well-established long-term trend, which enables a lot of activity. Uh, using the cloud for computing, not the topic of, of this presentation, has been greatly accelerated uh, by, by the, the pandemic. We had been developing and enhancing and increasingly using collaboration tools that allowed one to work together with people who weren't necessarily nearby on computer-oriented tools. Clearly, those got a, a, a big boost from the pandemic, but the trend was already in place. And we, had, we have been, for decades, increasingly digitizing all of our content, all of our work product, a lot of our schooling. And so that trend, again, was not so much accelerated, as enabling for being able to adapt to this physical isolation by working, playing, learning from home. So let's talk a little bit about, about working. What's happened in terms of PCs is that situations where, where people shared a PC or had a, a less capable PC for the second person in the household who needed them or the third or whatever, changed and basically everyone who was working needed a pc and this drove the 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 uptake and the increase in demand in the in the first calendar quarter and into the second calendar quarter some of these uh, uh pc purchases were upgrades the pcs have to be adequate to the task of working online of doing a lot of video conferencing so that fed this 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 demand there was also an increased demand for services. Several of our vendors have reported as purchasers, whether they be the individual or the business, chose to uh, attach additional uh, services to ensure continued operation without the direct access to IT departments or just to increase the security of continued operation under a more stressful situation. There were also increased sales of peripherals. So what you would expect if you were going to be working all day long on a PC at home without the things you might have had at work. So certainly displays sold well and, and uh, mice and keyboards to attach to, to, to um, notebook computers. Uh, and then when I say more, I mean things like office chairs but also things to contribute to enhance participation in in conferencing so cameras and lights and microphones and and things of that ilk all of these contributed to revenue increases for the pc vendors this was through largely the first peak that is to say the commercial peak uh, the consumer peak also has these attaches but not as at hot as at as high a rate. The second big trend was learning from home, and that uh, affects not only PCs, and, and I'm going to say that by PCs I'm using a more general term, for the younger uh, students, those would be tablets. For the Apple people, those might well be tablets even for, for older students accompanied by the keyboard, the, the, the iPad Pro with the new Magic Keyboard is a, a substantial learning platform. Chromebooks, another pre-existing trend. The adoption of Chromebooks had been increasing. The adoption of Chromebook in, in education had, had been increasing. But the, the use of Chromebooks in education, continue, the, the adoption was accelerated considerably um, by, the, by the need to do learning from home. And in fact, there have been some supply chain issues that affected not only PCs, but also Chromebooks. And again, I mentioned tablets for the younger students. This was basically, as we saw, a second peak. The first peak was commercial. The second peak was consumer. And I think that reflects the phases of the, of the pandemic where, where we went from, we just have to get the work done, we'll, we'll 
cover the educational stuff and the schools are somewhat disorganized to a recognition that we needed a, a an ongoing learning modality that required the necessary computing and peripheral uh, uh, attached revenue for for other for the for the people in the in the home who were who were learning. There are certainly challenges here. There are challenges for people who cannot cannot afford these devices. There are challenges for people who don't have the connectivity or cannot even cannot even get the connectivity. Rural uh, computing is a problem here. So what do we see as the issues and trends affecting uh, the reaction of of PC users and the PC industry to the the pandemic? Well, connectivity is a big one. We had enough to get through the initial crisis. It's mostly going along, but we don't have the coverage in many areas that we need to be to continue to have the the entire society a working from home, learning from home, playing. From home. Another one clearly is form factor, where where conventional desktop PCs are uh, suffered a serious decline, and we've also indicated that with with thin clients. Uh, the preferred form factor, so you can move it around and use it where you need it, is clearly the notebook. For people who are more steadily involved, there's a notebook connected work area. The the new uh, USB 3 docking uh, stations are, are really helpful in, in, this, in this arena. But desktop PCs, apart from some gaming PCs, have suffered uh, relative to notebook PCs. This is an acceleration of the existing trend, of course. Desktop PCs have been in decline for a number of years. And there are issues of availability. Initially, there were issues of of availability of even the factories and, and certainly key component parts. There was uh, a pre-existing condition with CPU availability, which has, has continued. I'll get into that uh, as well. We have been hearing reports of restricted supplies of less expensive displays, which are necessary for the less expensive PCs and, and, and Chromebooks. And finally, there are CPUs, where the, the, uh, the changes in, in, in Intel's plans uh, affected the, the PC and CPU market going back a year. In fact, that was one of the causes for the good year uh, good quarter one year ago, but that continues to be true. Intel concentrates its pro production on the higher end of its of its uh, processors, uh, putting pressure on the availability of low end process processors. At the same time, AMD is very much strongly coming into the market, but it's uh, in terms of affecting it so far, it, it's not been a large effect because the the PCs have to be uh, design, tested, produced, and all those things. But AMD is going to supplement the, the CPU supply across the board. Of course, in large enterprise, shifting a, 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 a the CPU is is a difficult thing, and so there's still a, a lot of momentum for Intel. But for individual purchases, we believe that uh, that that uh, AMD will be playing an increasing role. And of course. What buyers now know is that eventually Apple will not be using either AMD or Intel CPUs, but will make its own uh, CPUs on the ARM basis. That knowledge that eventually Apple was was going to change its platform did not affect the surge in Apple sales, or perhaps it did, and the surge would have even been greater. But there was a surge in Apple sales. What's happened? Uh, under these circumstances is is that uh, average, average unit revenues, which we sometimes refer to as average selling prices, have for the most part gone up a small amount, um, but that is off a, a track record of, of AURs increasing for quite a while now. Uh, AURs have been robust despite the increased purchases of low end PCs for education and Chromebooks for education. This is offset by increased sales of gaming rigs, of mobile workstations, of higher end notebook PCs, um, and by uh, a general trend in the in the purchasing uh, market of respecting 
the value one gets with higher price PCs, as well as their no, their navigating shortages, which often cause people to to muff, move up in 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 price range. We think this is a long term effect, reflecting the longer life cycle of PCs and a greater appreciation of what one gets when one spends more for a PC. What we're looking at, we believe going forward is a new normal for PCs that extends beyond uh, the, the immediate future, which is to say, in this pandemic, PCs have gained new respect, a respect I believe that have been growing for a while. For a long time, there was talk of tablets replacing PCs, there was talk of people using smartphones instead of PCs, but the form factor um, has basically has 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 led people to say, for a large part of what we want to do, the PC is the right form factor. So the 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 tablet or the or the the smartphone may well have more than enough computing power, but it doesn't have the the appropriate form factor, and that basically comes down to the keyboard. The keyboard endures. Uh, you can put the output of a of a non keyboard device up on a big screen, but it doesn't make it a productivity tool. You can attach less easy to use keyboards to them, but that begins to look like a bit of a kludge. And I think that the respect for the keyboard and the understanding of of the role that the PC plays in in users' spectrum of available tools has has definitely progressed. And this leads to the at least one PC per person model, which we believe is true. And and this, as as uh, Gianfranco Lanzi of, of of Lenovo pointed out, actually increases the PC TAM, the total available market, because in the past people tended to share PCs or not give PCs to people who didn't need them as urgently. Um, one of the things we've seen there is again is a change in the pricing distribution where there's we believe a migration up from the least expensive uh, price bands. Certainly, on, if if in res in resource constrained environments where uh, children may be less careful with their PCs, a low price PC is is a very desirable thing. But where people have the choice, they are now more willing than they have in the past to spend more money to get a better PC. Again, partially as a result of expecting to keep that PC for a longer time. We see PCs, they have matured for years, they're maturing again, and it's beginning to look more like a, a long-term comfortable consumer product where people choose one of three price bands, basically, the least they can get away with, value for money, and all out. And and the value for money uh, uh, arena is 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 a profitable one for vendors. So this new market that we spoke about has that larger increased TAM. Every person who's doing any of these things needs a PC, and they need it for themselves if at all possible. We believe this situation is enduring and will endure past the uh, past the end of the pandemic and and a return to a, a new and probably different reality. What the problem with this market is, is with this urgent buying spree in the the uh, second, third, and perhaps fourth quarter of this year, to a large extent, this new market has been satisfied. And when you take add that to the fact that PCs have greater longevity than they had in the past, that leads to difficulties in in uh, 2021, we believe. So let's talk about that. And the, so it's it's a problem both of a saturated market, but it's also a problem of of a recession. And we were we have definitely seen a global recession. It has been, in many cases, less bad than people thought, but it's serious, and there are lots of questions about how fast the recovery will be. And I believe it will be not terribly fast, at least not in the in the short term. So the big hit in the recession is the workforce, people losing jobs. Uh, in in many nations, uh, the government has provided supplemental income to 
to uh, partially compensate them for that. So some of the money taken out of the uh, out of the economy has is being replaced with, frankly, deficit spending by by governments. But still, less is being earned. And the and the the place where there have been large works workforce reductions are 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 fairly obvious. There there's uh, travel and and uh, hospitality and retail and things like that. But that's a big part of the global economy. The one aspect of this workforce is people in those in those segments had in work less of a need for PCs or for individual PCs. So the number of people losing their jobs was not reflected in a in a lower demand for PCs as the effect of people being out of work driving the rest of the economy down continues we expect there will be a greater reduction in demand for PCs so this is the overall global economy uh, eventually you know, things will have changed eventually will be recovery but even before recovery things will have changed and new segments of the economy will recover clearly tech has been one of the ones that has largely survived the first phase of the economy. We think that will happen with other things, but still we see an overall decline in the economy, a decline in available uh, uh, funds with which to buy PCs. And the third piece of this is uncertainty. Under, under conditions of, of enhanced uncertainty, people are going to be more careful with their money. So they may have more than adequate resources, but there will be a tendency to be more careful with it. Finally, the, the availability of capital to drive the, the uh, recovery. While there is a great deal of capital in, in financial institutions and, and high net worth individuals and many, many people in, in upper income brackets, a lot of the growth in the economy comes from capital saved by uh, people with less wealth. Uh, the, we think of restaurants as an obvious case. Clearly, they can they can borrow, but without any capital to start with, borrowing is going to be very limited. So one of the reasons we believe that recovery from the recession will be uh, slow is because that kind of uh, individual entrepreneur capital uh, resource base has been seriously eroded in the, in this pandemic. What kinds of segments have been uh, uh, affected? Uh, well, the ones we me we mentioned: uh, hospitality, travel, retail, uh, things like that. Uh, there's also been on a geographic state. It looks very much like Asia Pacific is at a faster recovery pace than EMEA, which is at a faster recovery pace than the Americas. Uh, in part, that is due to policy failures in the Americas, but those spread throughout the world because the Americas is such a large part of the global economy. And that's one of the reasons for our pessimism. Let's look a bit at, at the cycles that, that dictate this. Well, it's the obvious life cycle of the PC itself. And what we've been seeing in the industry over the last quite a few years, but, but more noticeable over the last small number of years, is an, a lengthening of the PC life cycle. That is attributable in part to the adoption of the solid state drive, which is more durable than a, a hard disk and, and, and also provides better performance such that people are less uh, dissatisfied with the current performance of their PCs. So we are facing, as we uh, gather PCs for our, for to work and, and play and learn, we are facing the expectation that it will be quite a while on the order of five or six years before those PCs need to be replaced. Then the other cycle we're seeing is, is saturation. If there's a concentration of demand in 2020, first for commercial, then for consumer, then we will see going forward a saturation of the market. And that saturation, we believe, may even affect uh, 4Q20 as 
the kind of holiday season purchasing of PCs for entertainment, for amusement, as gifts, as gifts for oneself, may have been preempted by having to buy a PC in one of the earlier quarters in the year. Finally, there's a, a, a robust market in refurbished and used PCs, which facing a recession, facing small businesses have to, having to watch their, their budgets, we think will also soften demand in 2021. Solid refurbs of PCs that came off lease in 2019 or 2020 will fill in the market and there will be more going forward as, as some companies downsize and try to recover some uh, cash from their PC fleets. Let's look a bit at 2021. Well, as I said, I believe the demand will be down. Uh, those who need PCs for working, learning, and playing will have, to a large extent, purchased them. We don't see a lot of growth uh, in, in new businesses, new jobs, which would be a source of demand. And where there is, the refurbs might, might meet the need. So what we see is increased competition. And that, we believe, will drive down prices. Supply chain problems will have sorted themselves out better. And we think there's going to be price uh, competition in, in 2021 and, and reduced revenue from PC. The other thing that affects this is, is confidence. And if, if the economic future is uncertain, if, if people don't see a clear path, path to growth, if the pandemic itself is still flaring up, there will be greater conservatism in purchasing that will that will decrease demand and that will in turn increase no, increase competition finally what do we see longer term going forward well we you know we're clearly living in a multi device world already we we're, we're looking at smartphone and pc for for many 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 users um we think that will continue to increase that the tools that allow that were well underway prior to the pandemic, and they will increase. And that is basically being able to access your data from, from anywhere, having a minimal transition cost to adding a new device to your, your computing environment, and a relatively easy configuration of new devices to be familiar. Under that circumstance, and that's the direction we've been heading, the the software vendors have been working on this, and to a certain extent, the PC vendors themselves. We can see a, a multi-PC trend. It's going to be small. The, the thin and light laptop is a very strong carry-with-you tool. It, it docks well into a complete computing environment, but still, for some people with available resources, having one PC here and another PC there, having a small and very light PC and a, and a heavier and more powerful PC makes sense. So we do see an increased utilization of multi-PCs as the effort to maintain multiple PCs goes down. So that concludes our, our presentation. I apologize once again for our technical difficulties. Please uh, post questions on, on, the, on the question list here. Let me see what we have so far. Okay, the first one is, did work, working from home challenge current fleets and put, top of the, and put top of the stack new refreshes in 2021, 22, as PC, PCs become available? I think the answer to that, it sounds wishy-washy, is, is sometimes. Um, Many cases, current fleets have been supplemented because some of the fleet is back at the office and you don't want to go get it. Um, to a certain extent, current fleets have been updated. The older PCs may have been refreshed to deal with the, the demands of video conferencing and the like. And I think that the, the whole order of the refresh cycle will have been affected by, uh, by this disruption. 
Nevertheless, if you had a relatively young PC and you had it at home, you probably just continued with it. And when it gets to be older in 2021, 22, you will come up for a resish. At what, the next question is, at what level do you expect working from home to endure? We expect some degree of folks, leadership, want to return to office. I think the answer is there are definitely um, people and, and businesses that want to return to office. I recently saw that one of the fin major financial services firms was concerned about the, the downtick in productivity on Mondays and Fridays with working from home and were uh, going to, to, um, uh, to require that, that workers return to the office when, when it was all all feasible. Still, an awful lot of businesses are adapting to work from home. They have accommodated it. They say there are certain hours when everyone has to be available, but otherwise we're flexible. Um, and, and that works for certain kinds of businesses. And it lowers some of their implicit costs. So if you have a company in a, an area that where housing costs are very high, which are where there are lots of companies, especially in tech, then being able to hire people that do that can pay a lot less for housing and therefore have lower salary requirements is very advantageous. So we've developed new tools, we've developed new methods, companies have tried out something they may not have tried out. So overall, we see a greater level of work from home than you would have predicted from the pre-existing trend, but there certainly will be a rebound as some businesses prefer not to work from home. Can you talk more about virtual collaboration, virtual learning, virtual play, and what some e examples of advanced usage that will be more broadly adopted at an accelerated uh, pace? So we think about um, video conferencing. And that is very much part of this picture. But there are collaboration tools built into our major productivity tools and have been for a number of years. Both, both the Microsoft suite and the Google suite are made for co collaboration. Um, and as people have been forced to do it, they, um, they become used to it. They know how, come how they, they, adopt, they adapt to it. We put very complicated products in front of our users, and it takes a while for them to learn how to use it, for the institution to learn how to use it, for even the entire industry to learn how to use it. So as we are forced into collaborating, um, then we become more capable of it. The systems work better. It's the same thing is absolutely true with education. There are a lot of questions about the extent to which the traditional college campus is necessary to get a, an advanced uh, education. Um, we can see a, even see a decreased uh, learning from home aspect uh, even in, in, in lower grades, although at the very lowest grades, schools serve a, a child care as well as a, a teaching uh, a tradition. Um, certainly, we expect that, that people are have gotten themselves engaged in very immersive multiplayer games and other and multiplayer multi-user um, social media situations where they they are happy to continue to work from home. So what we see again is an acceleration of existing existing trends. Um, one of the things we've seen is is a device from Lenovo. I've mentioned it a couple times. That is a team specific little smart spe speaker smart screen device and i would not at all be surprised at an evolution of a new category of device that makes it easy to work on your computer screen on the on the work stuff and com and communicate with your colleagues off offline to a certain extent any forecast about enterprise consumption model changes i.e moving from capex and internal ip IT support to OPEX and PC as a service. Um, we believe that that the the pandemic has has accelerated what I think was already a trend. I think that 
PC as a service is is uh, something that that would work even better. Uh, that that com helps compensate even better for the limitations of the traditional model in this distributed environment. So, uh, there's also, in terms of of finances, um, businesses who have been disrupted find that the the uh, turning turning things into opex gives them the greater flexibility and there's also just the the uncertainty which is also something that will drive that kind of consumption based utilization but under the i'm, I'm glad you asked the question about enterprise because small businesses are limited in what they can do with with um pc as a service by by the fact that they they basically have to assure the seller or a financer that they will be able to maintain their contract. It certainly shifted smaller businesses onto the cloud for computing, where that they definitely want that pay-as-you-go kind of attitude. Governments have traditionally favored desktop form factor. Do you think that we will see increased desktop to notebook conversion in the in the government sector? Um, I, I think mostly not, but in some more avant-garde uh progressive uh segments of the government you you will see that uh certainly if where they have been forced to buy notebook computers uh they're going to say bring that bring that in and and we'll have a screen and keyboard and mouse for you plug it right in here thank you uh, so somewhat but i think more traditional government agencies with people at desktops will continue that way for the large part and in general that's what we think is the 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 long term future of desktops, which is there's there's some irreducible demand for exactly that kind of form factor in exactly that kind of environment. Governments are are one of the uh, the customers that 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 like that. Um, have you seen increased traction for zero clients, cloud hosted clients? If so, for what industries and user types? Uh, Frankly, we have not seen them uh, e uh, for for thin clients um, devices, except for Chromebooks, which are of course thin client devices. We have seen some increased interest in um, VDI kinds of solutions because of greater security and control, um, but the network capacity is a limitation the inability to service directly is a limitation for the most part those those areas have not really increased in the in the pandemic can you talk more about virtual collaboration virtual learning virtual play and what some examples of the more advanced usage that when we more, more broadly adopted an accelerated phrase i believe that i largely uh answered that uh, in in response to another another question. And I want, I'm making sure I've got. Okay. Okay. Most of the first is now we can hear you again. I apologize. Uh, there's a question about accessing a copy of the slides, and and yes, you can. Um, uh, let me see how that is done. Again, all, all new. A replay will be available after the event. So it's not the slides, it's a replay. Uh, and if you visit our, our website, www.tbri.com, uh, you can receive them. Um, if you really want the slides, just send an email to me, ezra.gotheil.tbr.com. Do you believe Chromebooks are living up to the rigor of work from home, uh, learn from home, or people needing to get Win PC. What's the future look like for Chromebook? More accept acceptance, realization they aren't quite there. Um, I have not heard or seen any questions about the Chromebook not being enough. Um, I have seen a certain amount of uptake in the non bottom of the line Chromebooks, a willingness to spend more to get a, 
a Chromebook. I think the future looks very strong for Chromebooks. I think their general adoption uh, will continue to increase, and they will be used. Not a, they're clearly very well ensconced in education, but they will be used for certain roles within businesses. And I think Google is being very aggressive with making that possible. At what level do you expect working from home to endure? We expect some degree of folks, leadership want to return to office. I can't make a solid uh, estimate of that. I don't have the, the key numbers, but I think that the answer is that there will be a rebound from the pandemic and forced work working from home, but it will be to a level lower uh, what, than, than, we, um, than we would have predicted uh, prior to the. And I answered that question. Are you seeing consumer PCs purchased for commercial purposes? If so, can you speak to the, this trend and its trajectory? Uh, basically, this has always been true where, um, where users are able to choose their PCs or in small businesses. And um, the question is, is, is from a, 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 never mind, I can't say who it is. Uh, the high-end high -end consumer PCs are, in, unless you're using the specific commercial aspects of them, are very uh, very useful and and widely ad adopted because unless you're using the the commercial specific features, they're they're very strong PCs. Okay, we've seen that. I, there was a question about PC as a service. Um, I think that the trend will accelerate. I think the current situation means that a it's it's you know the, you're not going to do those deals very very soon, but going forward uh customers will be more more uh, amenable. I think a lot of the potential for growth in p c as a service is in uh the small business and even consumer space, and there both the offerings aren't really mature. And they're not well communicated, and the financing questions will have to be resolved before they move forward. I see that as a longer term trend. I like your point about migration toward more premium systems. Thank you, and I can see why you would like that. Following on that, our first time are new PC ownership users entering at a certain price range? And the answer to that is frankly, we don't know although they may very well be forced to enter at a higher price range than they originally intended because of availability issues. And I believe now uh, that I have answered all of the questions uh, that you have posted. Thank you so much. Again, I apologize. And please follow up uh, reaching out to, to me or to TBR for further questions. I have a, a little... Uh, script to read here. Um, please feel, feel free to reach out to the team with any follow-up questions. If you have a few moments, it would be greatly appreciated if you could please fill out the survey on your screen. A replay version of the webcast will be available after the event and will be sent to you via email. To view a list of our upcoming and past webinars, please visit tbri.com and please be sure to join us on Wednesday, September 30th, for federal IT moves past COVID-19. Uh, thank you and have a great day. Thank you all very much.